This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battlebright Sage. So today I want to talk about orb control. I've been going through my old videos and figured I probably would have covered this at some point, but surprisingly I've never done a video specifically about orbs. I'll add a video about orb control to my list, but today I'm actually going to be going against the grain. So instead we're going to be discussing why you don't need the orb. So I think it goes without saying that orb control is important. I'm definitely not going to tell you to just ignore orbs but I'd be willing to wager that more people overestimate the value of orbs than underestimate it. We're almost hardwired to put a lot of emphasis on pickups and objectives in games. Obviously, there are no objectives beyond just eliminating the other team in battle, right? So the only other thing we have to worry about is pickups. If you look at a game like Quake, Pickups are pretty much the key to victory. Keeping track of and controlling the armor and megas is pretty much your win condition in Quake. So for anyone who's come from Quake or any game like Quake, it makes sense that you'd put a huge emphasis on the pickups we have in Battle Right. Now, don't get me wrong, orbs are important. I think I've mentioned before that getting the central orb in 3v3 means three bars of energy for your team and three bars denied from the enemy team. So in a sense, you get a six bar swing each time you win an orb and that's ignoring the health you get too. But you've got to ask yourself, what does it cost to win the orb? If you have the enemy zoned out of mid, then it doesn't really cost you anything. You just keep them out of mid and farm orbs. It's a no-brainer. Take all of the orbs, including the small ones. Likewise, if you have a pull ability, you might be able to bring the orb to you. That's also a fairly low cost for securing an orb. But what if you're the one who's zoned out of mid? What is it going to take to get that orb now? There are a lot of people at almost every rank who give the orb too much value. Yes, it's important, but you should never take a big risk to get it. It's not that important. Quite often, you'll see people push up on their own to get the orb. But remember, if you've been pushed out of mid, there's probably a reason for it. Getting back into mid isn't as easy as holding down a key and walking towards mid. You're going to take so much damage in the process that the orb won't even matter. And your other option is to space into mid, and I think we all know how risky it is to space aggressively. There are times when it's worthwhile, but securing the orb is just not one of those times. Right now, maybe you're thinking, but, but, the team with more orbs usually wins. And you'd be right, to some extent. But consider this. Maybe the number of orbs taken is an indicator of how well a team is playing, rather than the factor deciding the victory. To put it another way, they didn't win because they got six orbs. They got six orbs because they played better than you did. Of course, there are times when your team has every opportunity to secure orbs, but just ignores it. That's a different story. But most of the time when the enemy goes six orbs to none, it's because you were zoned out of mid all game. And the reason you're zoned out of mid is because they're outplaying you. Quite often, you'll see people start suiciding into mid because they think orb control is the reason they're losing. Nine times out of 10, that's not why you're losing. You just need to play better and suiciding in order to get orbs is the opposite of what you should be doing. Hey, maybe you'll get all the orbs this time, but you'll be the first person on your team to die as well. And here's another thing that you may or may not be aware of. You know how in a lot of competitive games, there's some stat that strongly indicates who will win. Maybe the team that gets first blood will win 65% of the time in a MOBA or something like that. 65% is statistically significant. And of course, first blood in battle right is a big deal. I'd imagine that the team that gets first blood in battle right probably wins close to 90% of the time. But what about the first orb? It seems intuitive that the first orb would be of some significance statistically. Mmm, no. Okay, in Europe, the team that gets the first orb wins 53% of the time. But in South America, first orb and victory have a negative correlation. Honestly, you could probably conclude that the only reason it's not closer to 50% in each region is due to a small sample size. These stats are from the BPL regionals, so the sample size is pretty small. But the fact that every region is within 3.5% of being exactly 50-50 kind of tells you something. The first orb just doesn't matter. Sure, if one team gets six orbs, then the balance starts to tip. But this little statistic alone tells you a lot about how wrong our interest can be. It's totally counterintuitive that the middle orb would be so unimportant. 
And that brings me back to the cost of securing an orb. With the knowledge that First Orb has literally no indication on who will win the game, what are you willing to risk to take it? And the correct answer is, you shouldn't risk anything to get it. Get it if you can, but not at the cost of taking a lot of damage or wasting cooldowns. Hell, if your opponent wants to waste cooldowns trying to get the orb, why don't you just let them have it and then do 40 plus damage to them while they have no escapes? And actually, that's a very viable strategy. There's actually a team who play in BPL who actively try to abuse other teams who overcommit to orbs. And based on the first orb win rate stats, can you guess which region and team it is? So the main thing I want you to take away from this is not to ignore the orb. Definitely don't do that. However, if you're someone who puts too much value in orb control, maybe focus a little less on orbs and a little more on outplaying your opponent. Oh, and don't forget the small orange orbs. Everyone always forgets those for some reason. Pick them up when you have the opportunity. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more Battle Right guides, news, and discussion. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some unique rewards, then head over to patreon.com slash battlerightsage. And don't forget to check out twitch.tv slash battlerightsage. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.